Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is a mini lesson on asking questions, level four, evaluating questions. When you're evaluating questions, you want to make sure that every good student question is addressing a natural phenomena. So we're going to look at some student questions that address phenomena, but that's something we want to keep in the back of our mind as we write down what is the phenomena that they're trying to actually explain. And then the whole evaluation process, when you look at a question, it's really four parts. So we're going to look at the experimental question and you want to identify is there an independent and dependent variable? And then you want to look at the hypothesis and make sure that that hypothesis is an explanatory hypothesis and then it has a prediction. So after watching this video, you should be able to evaluate student questions around phenomena like does music affect plant growth or how does royal jelly affect uh, development of honeybee queens? I'm going to start by evaluating some student questions around a phenomena of evaporation of water, and then you'll have a chance to do the same with these bouncing balls and surfaces. So let me clean up the water and the balls, and then we'll get started. So with each of these, you're going to have, first of all, the phenomena that the student questions are trying to address. And so let me write that down. And then the next thing that we have is we're going to have some experimental questions. So I have an experimental question and a hypothesis. So this is one and we'll start with that. And then there's going to be a second one that we'll get to in just a second. And so as I lay this out, so we've got experimental question one, and then we've got a hypothesis. Um, let me just kind of read those out so you can hear those. And so this person is saying their question or experimental question is, does weather affect evaporation? And then their hypothesis is, if the weather changes, then evaporation might happen because weather can sometimes affect things. And so we're going to evaluate that question. The first thing I want to do is with the question itself, can I identify the independent and the dependent variable? Let me show you how to do that. So as I look at their question, does weather affect evaporation? I can identify a clear independent variable. That's what's changing just because of the word effect. And then they're seeing how does that affect evaporation? The next thing I want to do is look at their hypothesis. And so I want to identify, is there an explanation in the hypothesis? And is there some kind of a prediction in there as well? So let me write that down. Okay, so when it comes to their hypothesis, the two things I'm looking for is a prediction. And they're saying that if the weather changes, evaporation might happen. So it might affect evaporation. And then they have an explanation, and their explanation is really that weather affects things. And so now that I've laid out what is their hypothesis and what is their experimental question, what I can do is I can evaluate their question. Let me show you how to do that. Okay, so as I evaluate student one's question, what I'm saying is number one, this idea of weather, number one, it'd be hard to control, or number two, and also it doesn't really address the phenomena. And so as I'm evaluating question, that's feedback I would give to the student. And then the next thing I'm looking at is in the explanation, there's no real causal link. Just this explanation that weather can affect things is a real weak causal link. And so if I were to evaluate this question, I would say it's not a great experimental question and it's not a great hypothesis. Now let me do that with a second question. So I'll put that up here and I'll do the same. What is the question? This one is, how does the temperature of water affect its rate of evaporation? And then if we look at the hypothesis, it might be hard to read, but it says, if the temperature of water is increased, then the rate of evaporation will increase because higher temperatures provide more energy to water molecules, allowing them to escape into the air more quickly. So let me go through and then break that into its different parts.
Okay, so as I break out that question and hypothesis, I think what they're changing is, or wondering is, how does the temperature affect the rate of evaporation? So this is independent and dependent. And you probably saw this as I wrote. It's lots of times easier when you're looking at a hypothesis to look at the prediction first. So they're giving me the prediction right up front, and then they're saying their explanation is, since there's more energy in warmer water, there's going to be more evaporation. So there's going to be an explanation. So you can see right away that this is a better question. So let me kind of evaluate the question. So what I would say for student two is pretty much everything that was missing in student one is found in student two. They have sufficient evidence, temperature and evaporation, to help explain evaporation. And then they provide a nice causal link. So they have a nice explanation using energy that explains their prediction. And so as I look at this, it's not is it a good or a bad question, it's what are the elements that are missing. So a good question should be, variables that address the phenomena, also an explanatory portion to the hypothesis, and then prediction. So let me pause, clean this up, and then you'll have a chance to evaluate some questions on your own. Okay, for the next one, you're gonna be looking at a phenomena of bouncing balls and surfaces. We've got an experimental question and hypothesis from two different students. So what I would encourage you to do is pause the video. I'll put links in the slides down below. And I would go through and evaluate these uh, questions and hypotheses and then evaluate them. Then unpause the video, come back, and I'll show you my thinking. Okay, so the first thing I would want to do is identify the phenomena. And the next thing I'm going to do is go through and look for the variables, explanation, and prediction in each of the questions. Uh, and then I'll come back and kind of walk through that, and then we'll do the evaluation. Okay, so as I look through it, I'm starting to see that maybe students' questions ones are better experimental questions. They are changing the type of surface to see how it affects bound height. Um, we're then making a prediction that the balls will bounce higher on a hard surface, and then energy end, ends up being the uh, explanation for why more of that energy would go back into the bounce on a hard surface. On the second question, they're just saying, let's see how it bounce on different things. So I think the independent would be different things. Uh, their prediction is that bowels will bounce differently. So they're using the word different quite a bit. And then their explanation is different things are different. And so now I'm going to go through and really what you want to do is kind of look at the variables, look at the prediction and explanation, and then write an evaluation. Let me show you what I would write. Okay, so my evaluation, what I said in student one, that they've got good evidence. It addresses both portions, bouncing balls and surfaces from the phenomena. Also, they've got a nice causal link to bounce height in their explanation with energy. As I look at questions two and hypothesis two, it's hard to gather evidence. This seems to be too general and there's no logic. This is like uh, circular logic that's found in their explanation. And so that's how you evaluate 
questions. The nice thing is if you give students uh, feedback like that, they could improve their questions and that's going to improve their investigation. So now that you've done that, you could look for some more student questions. I've got some linked be below. Uh, you could look at how music affects plant growth. You could also look at um, a royal jelly and its, its role in development of queens. Um, but that's how you evaluate a question. Really just look at the two parts, their question and hypothesis, and it'll save them a lot of time before they get into the investigation. So I hope that's helpful.